Well, it's 7 o'clock in the morning and time for Good Day L.A. With your host, Jerry Dexter. And we have so many nice letters. I, I would never be able to read all of them. But a very nice letter from Betty Hodges and... Uh, and, oh, Harriet to Roy. Harriet Roy. Oh, Harriet and Roy, I see. Well, Harriet and Roy think that Stu is one of the best-looking men they've ever seen. Right. Right. Yes. That's, uh, that's Roy who thinks that. Harriet doesn't think much of him at all. It's very, uh, uh, it's very appropriate that our next guest should be here today uh, on Labor Day because he's one of the, uh, the new leaders of, of farm labor in America right now. His United uh, Farm Workers are urging consumers to boycott the purchase of California grapes in markets across the country. So we've asked him here to tell you about that. And of course, this is Mr. Cesar Chavez. Tell me about the grape boycott. What is that all about? Well, see, it's a... Um We've taken our, our uh, struggle to, to organize uh, farm workers into a union to, the, to America. Mm -hmm. We're forced to do that because uh, as farm workers, we do not have the rights that other workers have under the federal law. And um, there, are no rules or, there are no rules or regulations uh, to organize by. And so we're organizing in the same setting that miners try to organize in carpenters, say, 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what we're going to do right now. We're going to show you how jazz players play country and western. Mike Wofford and Joe Pass certainly are outstanding jazz performers, members of our Roger Pearsall Quartet. Of course, so is Whitey and Roger himself. But this particular number uh, features Mike Wofford on piano, Joe Pass on guitar, and uh, Jimmy Wakeley is going to sing an old Hank Williams tune. Hey, good looking. Here we go. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> You, uh, unlike some others, have asked for caution in the area of gun legislation. What type of gun control do you feel uh, is feasible? What kind of gun control do you feel is realistic? Well, I've been concerned that there's a certain amount of hysteria right now, and I think it's as simple as coming back to the point where the great majority of the students, the faculty, the taxpayers, the people, the trustees of the universities and colleges simply say to the students and faculty, here are the guidelines, here are the rules of conduct for distributing this education. Now obey the rules or get out. Here comes Corky now. <laughs> Corky? What a guy won't do to be in show business. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, and time for Good Day L.A. With a special salute to the city of San Diego. Your host is, from his early morning bath, Jerry Dexter. Uh, I'll tell you something. There's a leak in this wetsuit. Oh, hello. Hello to you, and good morning to you. This is San Diego Day, the entire show. The entire show this morning is dedicated to the city of San Diego. Yeah, San Diego really is one of my favorite cities. Yesterday I was in Philadelphia. The day before that I was in New York. And I'm telling you, it's that old, old line about it's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. The humidity there in Philadelphia yesterday was like 85%, and it was just absolutely impossible. But so I've been to San Diego many, many times. I've never worked there, but I, I've visited there many times. And it's a beautiful, beautiful city. the show, we were talking about giant stars, and, and what a giant star really is. And you know, there really aren't that many giant stars around anymore. Mm -hmm. There's a certain chemistry that makes uh, a giant star, and as we have been talking the last uh, few days, uh, Lee Marvin is certainly one of those people. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Actually, they call me Soupy, a superstar. Tell me about your role, first of all, in Paint Your Wagon. 
There was not an awful lot to tell, really, without divulging the film. But it's um, an exciting role. I like this beard. I hate it. Yeah? Yeah, yeah well, you scary. know, guys like to clean up and shower and stuff. And, and you have been quoted, I think it was a couple of years ago now, maybe it was 65, 66, in Time Magazine, as saying, uh, violence, I love violence. You know, how do you feel about that kind of thing? Because you have been known as a violent guy in, in, in the roles you've played. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about that? I feel tremendously about it, but the one thing the audience must understand is that mine has always been make-believe violence. Yes. Because you know, if you want to talk about violence, you look at Vietnam, and there's no answer to that. Right. You know, you got to say no. But you know, in uh, screen work or in you know make-believe world of actors, you can hit a guy, you can tear his head off in the whole routine and never touch him, even though you give the impression of that. Right. So. Uh, a statement like that would be four or five or ten or twenty years old. The the one role I remember specifically was the killers, as the as the picture opens and you walk in and there are all the the blind people there as the character pushes them aside and shoots one of them. And I don't think anyone will ever forget that in the opening of that film. Well, yeah, but the exciting thing was the blindies themselves, because these were just blind guys, you know, and they're like for the first time that year they were out to earn their own personal buck, you know. And John Cassavetes had talked to him, so I told him, I said, boys, when I come in, I want to come in like a real heavy, and so the best thing you can do as a heavy is to knock over a blind guy, right? And they said, yeah, 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 with their canes and their eyes up. I said, do you mind if I come through hard? And they said, no, please do. If you don't, then we hate you. So I went through the doors, and all these blind guys are falling. Have you ever seen a horrible sight? Just watch a blind man fall, you know, reach for the ground. And they loved it. They earned their dollar, had a free lunch, and went home. And they were part of life. Whereas before that, they were a, you know, a case. And these guys just, you know, they, they made me heavy. Lee Marvin, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. We'll be back in a moment. Jerry Dexter! <laughs> Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning on Labor Day. And you know, I was thinking about this driving in, and it's Labor Day, and the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who don't belong to any unions at all, today is a day off for them. But all the guys here, I guess uh, every single one of us belongs to a union, and we're working on Labor Day. What about that, guys? How many unions do we have represented here? We must have about seven or eight, huh? What do we have? IBEW and uh, oh, yeah. NABEC. NABET and IATSE, right? And what other union do we have? AFTRA and uh, the Teamsters and uh, who knows? Musicians Union. Now, I don't think they're, I guess they're rep. Are you guys belong to the union yet? This is underwater technology in North Hollywood, California. I was out there the other day being shown the equipment by the owners of the school. It's a school for deep sea divers. And according to the owners of the school, a young man, well versed in the art of deep sea diving, can earn as high as $200 a day. And that's what they say, the helmet. Here I'm being outfitted with the, uh, the suit itself. It's, I have never before been in a uh, a deep sea diving outfit. And right there, I'm not sure that I want to be in one at that moment. Now the helmet goes on. And the faceplate will be put on in a moment. And that helmet itself is heavy. That helmet weighs approximately 45 pounds. But here I'm climbing into the, into the tank. And this was really an experience. I'd never done anything like this before. And it was quite something. It's a lot of fun, really, after you get used to the idea. And there I go into the, down deep into the tank itself. And you'll see the air coming out of the exhaust portion of the helmet. There are the bubbles on the right-hand side, top of the screen. Now I'm going down into the, tank. We'll have a shot here 
in a moment taken from another angle. The tank is very deep. There's a shot taken through a porthole down at the bottom of the tank. Our cameraman came around to the outside and there I'm down deep inside, inside the tank. Writing here on an underwater slate with a special black marking pen. And there's the cue for commercial. This is the Bonnie and Clyde look. Yeah. All right, we'll be back to check on that in a few moments. Bonnie and Clyde look, Gus Dupree. Our next guest is uh, making a return uh, visit here to, to Good Day L.A. He's a sensational performer and probably one of the best known of all the country and western stars. Just recorded a brand new recording which may very well be a hit all of its own called Heartaches and he's going to do that for us right now. Jimmy Wakeley. Hello, Jim. Heartaches. Heartaches. A lot of young fellows don't remember the sound of Ted Williams the way he did it. You know, it was so big, right. the record. And uh, actually, I just more or less copied his rhythm section, but did it with, um, uh, you know, a country guitar, jazz guitar player. I see. I don't remember t how Ted Williams sounded myself, come to think of it. Well, that. you're just a young fellow. You haven't been exposed. You've been right. sheltered. You That's have a sheltered right. life. That's right. I want you to... <laughs> yeah, well, perhaps. I knew you in I Vegas. Know. You weren't sheltered there. Boy. Never mind that. Oh. Never mind that. It's Evelyn Wood reading Dynamics. Call him up on the phone and talk to him. Find out about it. Our next guest is the California State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Dr. Max Rafferty. Good morning, Max. And good morning, Gary. Good morning, sir. First of all, the first thing I want to ask you, of course, is your reaction to last night, the, uh, the nomination of Mr. Humphrey and his running mate, and your reaction generally on the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. Well, of course, uh, Mr. Humphrey's uh, nomination was uh, in the cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody knew this was coming. From what we see in California, of course, we get the we only got one boss in California, and that's Mr. Unruh. And he's a different kind of boss, really, than this. I can't imagine Jess Unruh uh, doing the sort of things that we saw Daly do the other night. So as I say, I was more concerned about what happened inside the convention than with what happened outside. Although that was bad enough, heaven knows. Mm -hmm. What uh, What about your recent statements? This is a change of subject here, but I want to get to it. Your recent statements about. Czechoslovakia, I think, were particularly interesting. You want to expound on that? You know, uh, Father Vaughn here was talking to us uh, a little while ago about the young people. And, of course, I've spent 28 years with them. They're my life work. Your father was a member of the Greek Parliament, and your grandfather was the mayor of Athens, was he not? Yes. So the politics comes naturally to you, doesn't it? Have you always been interested in politics? No, I was not interested uh, in politics. I thought that uh, being an actress, uh, it was a social thing for my country. And I try all the time to make films in Greece, to make uh, uh, directors to come to Greece and uh, many people of art. I thought that was my job. Uh, but after the coup, because I hate fashion, that's why I interfere with it. What is it you want done, Romina? What do you think the other countries should do to bring about a change as you, as you see it? So, to cut military aid to the junta, they don't need the weapons to torture people, Greek people. To cut all, all help to the junta and to not recognize the hunter. Well, yeah, I've never, I, you know, I'm just trying to think back of all the people I've talked to in various radio, television interviews. I've never seen anyone as determined as you are. You're a fabulous person. Thank you so much for being on the show. I thank, thank you. you. Good luck to you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Hang on, we're going to be right back. Hey, I'm so <laughs> glad you could be on the show today. Oh, you were punching that bag, hitting that thing pretty yeah. hard, weren't you? It's not an old bag, but it works, works pretty good. Well, it's from our old prop department. Yeah. Yeah, back in Jess Willard's day, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I can think so. Right. Hey, listen, you know, I have heard you on so many commercials. You have a whole new career going for yourself, don't you? Yeah. Will you believe commercials? I do voiceover. Will you believe anything yeah. like that? It used to be the days of people like Westbrook Van Voorhees. You know, he was the March of Time. And... Uh, 
uh, the fellow that did the Metropolitan Opera for so long. He did a lot of commercials. And then the style and commercials changed, and they wanted believability, and that's when they called on you, didn't That's you? right. Uh, if I talk like you, I'll be out of business. <laughs> <laughs> what, are some of those, you, what are some of those commercials you've got going? Oh, I got, I got a bar. <laughs> I am ashamed to say it. I, I got about uh, 30 or 40 going. You make a lot of money, Rocky. I do uh, a lot of shoe commercials. and Yeah, and I've, I do I've that seen them. MP27, Tom McCann, <laughs> Coke, Jiffoam, uh, Chevrolet, Pontiac. Uh. <laughs> We're not discriminating in any Rocky's not discriminating well, in any the, way. The, the, the great thing I like about it is that thing, residuals. When the, first, the guy first told me, does he want to do a commercial? I says, yeah. I said, what do you get? He said, what do you get? Scale. I said, I don't work for scale. About 13 minutes past 8 o'clock in the morning on, on Good Day L.A. Jerry Dexter here with you. And I have, uh, I have really learned something new and, and different in the uh, Evelyn Wood Reading Dynamics class that I'm taking. I've been telling you how much faster I read now, and now that I'm learning to read dynamically, and how much it helps me, uh, you know, here on the show and in other things that I do. Uh, and now I've got to tell you this. I've learned how to effectively use a pencil while I'm reading, and it's really great. And it is, uh, it's so easy. My Evelyn Wood uh, teacher has shown me the, the uh, reading dynamics way to mark a paper or a book with a simple code using a pencil. And I've learned a way to indicate the, the main idea and the important facts and the details while I am reading. Reading dynamics has shown me that I don't have to go back and outline what I think is, is most important in order to remember it. And it certainly helps me. It's amazing what it has done for me in my reading comprehension and, of course, in my rate of speed as I read. It can certainly do the same for you. It is absolutely great. I'm taking the course, and I know what I'm talking about. And uh, you know that in all the years uh, here in Los Angeles that I've been talking to you on radio and television and selling you a lot of things, I've never sold you anything that I didn't believe in used myself, and I uh, am taking this course, and it is just absolutely fabulous.